Good afternoon. Um, it's great to see so many people here this afternoon. I hope you're all enjoying the conference. Uh, thank you. So this, more, or this afternoon, I'll talk with you about what is new in the operating room and what are some of the new surgical techniques um, that we have for our patients with ovarian cancer. Um, just one disclosure, I am a site, the site PI for a, um, a study that I'll talk about during this talk from OnTarget Labs. Um, we're going to talk mainly about heated intraperitoneal chemotherapy, or HIPEC, uh, for ovarian cancer, it's sort of an old technique uh, with a new application. And we'll also talk a little bit about intraoperative imaging, and um, by seeing more and taking out more in the operating room, can we improve our surgical outcomes? So, you know, surgery has been ha a cornerstone of ovarian cancer treatment for many, many years. Um, and this really dates back to studies that very early on showed that the more tumor you take out, the better patients do. So our goal during surgery is to take out as much tumor as we can see and hopefully get patients down to really no visible disease at the time of surgery, but our second backup goal being less than one centimeter of disease. And as you can see here, you know, it, for every percent that we take out, they get an increase in survival. So our key concepts really to remove all visible tumor. We categorize our surgeries as suboptimal, where we have more than one centimeter of tumor left, optimal, which is less than one centimeter of tumor, or uh, microscopic, no visible disease, no residual disease, or no gross residual disease, or R0. Um, about, depending on where patients have surgery, optimal to bulking rates range from about 20 to 98 percent. And we really have an all or nothing concept, which really means either you go for it and you do a big surgery and you take everything out, or you stop. So you don't want to put a patient at risk, um, a surgical risk, if you can't really get everything out. Um, so that's our all or none concept. So what might, us t might it take for us to get to optimal? Usually it's taking out the uterus, taking out the floating tubes in the ovaries, taking out the omentum, which is the fatty pad that hangs from the stomach, and really removing anything else. So that stripping of the lining of the abdomen called the peritoneum. It's um, sometimes removal of the bowel, sometimes removal of the spleen, um, sometimes str stripping of the diaphragm, and sometimes taking out actually a segment of the diaphragm, um, liver resection as well. So, and then grossly, if there are any involved lymph nodes, we take those out at the time of surgery as well. So, you know, when, we, when it comes to the concept of operating, there's a couple ways we can look at it. One, can, can we remove more? If we take out more, are we going to be able to improve survival? If we um, give chemotherapy in the operating room, so if we give, put something in the abdomen, will that make our surgery more effective? Um, and then there's concepts like I'm sure Dr. Kumar mentioned earlier today about can we make it safer? Can, can we choose optimal patients to go to the operating room? Um, so what we're kind of talking about today is what can we do in the operating room to make things a little more effective? So um, is chemotherapy an option? So there is this um, type of treatment called heated intraperitoneal chemotherapy, or HIPEC, which is the infusion of heated chemotherapy into the abdomen at the time of surgical debulking. And this has traditionally been used for penicillin malignancies, but has been really expanded to ovarian cancer as well as to colon cancers um, very recently, and, and stomach cancer as well. So what, what is HIPEC? This does have audio, but I'll kind of walk you through it. So um, this is an animation of HIPEC. Here's the abdomen. Those are the bowels that you see. We'll see if it'll load. You can't see it at all? Uh-oh. Um, is there a way to show the, the um, Google YouTube video, even without audio, just to show what's on my screen, or no? No, it's on Google. It's just on the web. Hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy, or HIPEC, is a treatment option for patients with advanced cancers that have spread to the abdominal cavity or peritoneum. 
where the screen is. So, nope, that's okay. So, doctors first, begin with what is called cytoreductive that? surgery to remove all visible tumors in the abdominal area. The extent of the surgery depends on the findings during surgery. Surgery can involve the removal of tumors in the upper and lower abdominal area, on the omentum, on the liver, stomach, small intestine, colon, rectum, pancreas, spleen, appendix, uterus, ovaries, and the peritoneal surfaces. Surgery to remove tumors is thorough and aggressive with the goal of preserving organs whenever possible. The doctor carefully examines the abdominal region, quadrant by quadrant, searching for and removing tumors. With great care, the doctor uses highly specialized surgical techniques to strip the tumors from the peritoneal surfaces and organs and seal small blood vessels. All of the visible tumors are removed. Next, the doctor administers the HIPEC, or heated chemotherapy treatment, with the goal of killing any remaining cancer cells that cannot be seen. Tubes and temperature probes are placed into the abdominal cavity. The doctor briefly closes the skin of the abdomen with sutures. The abdominal cavity is flooded with a solution that includes chemotherapy drugs. This solution is heated. The tubes and probes are connected to a machine. This controls the temperature and flow of the solution. The heated chemotherapy solution is continuously circulated throughout the abdominal cavity so that the cavity is uniformly exposed to heat and chemotherapy. The combination of heat and chemotherapy causes the solution to kill microscopic cancer cells. Gentle shaking is applied to the abdomen to help the solution distribute to all surfaces within the abdomen. Following the HIPEC treatment, the fluid is drained from the abdominal cavity. The abdomen is reopened and the tubes and probes are removed. At this time, any necessary reconstructive surgery is performed. For example, the doctor may need to reconnect a resected colon. Finally, the doctor closes the abdominal incision. The surgery and high pec treatment together may take 6 to 12 hours to complete. Perfect. So, you know, traditionally this has been studied pretty much in appendiceal malignancies, but appendiceal malignancies are a lot like ovarian cancer in how that they grow on the surface of the peritoneum and on the surface of the bowel. So there have been a, a handful of studies that have looked at using HIPEC in patients that have ovarian cancer, and they've looked at it in various settings. They've looked at it um, primarily in recurrence, but also in the upfront setting. And, um, that give me the just going to try to get you guys all the full slideshow, but um, I don't remember how he did that. How did you get that so I can get just the slide? Mm -hmm. So um, there, most of those studies have shown improved survival in those patients, but they have not been randomized controlled studies. So they really just looked at do patients do okay? Does it seem to be effective in patients with ovarian cancer? There is one study um, that was just published this past month in January, in January in the New England Journal of Medicine that is a study ran from the Netherlands. It was a multi-institution study that looked at the use of HIPEC in patients that had neoadjuvant chemotherapy. So all the patients on the study had 
new adjuvants were usually about three cycles of chemo and then they had their interval debulking surgery. And at the time of their interval debulking surgery, they were randomized either to cytoreductive surgery and no high pack or cytoreductive surgery with high pack. Um, and that study showed a survival benefit to high pack in that patient population. So I'll show you here the. Yeah. Okay, I'm getting out. I thought it was. Or was it PCO? Well, we need to get back to the. We're going to have to get back to the. The. the to this. Yeah, off there we of go. The, uh, right there. where we were. So, um, so this was a study published um, out of the Netherlands. Dr. Van Dryl was the primary author. There were 245 patients. Um, they all had three preoperative cycles of carboplatin, paclitoxel, and then everybody underwent cytoreductive surgery, and then half the patients were randomized to HIPAC and half were not. And they used, um, intraoperative, or they used cisplatin as their agent in the abdomen. And just here, I just wanted to point out as a kind of a small screen uh, that the, the majority of patients had high-grade serous, um, but their, otherwise their characteristics were very well balanced between the group that had high pec and the group that did not have high pec. And if you look at their survival, so this is recurrence-free survival here on your left and overall survival on the right. Um, Recurrence-free survival is the time to first recurrence after their completion of surgery. And there was a statistically dif significant difference there as well in, as in the overall survival. Um, and it was about four months for recurrence-free survival, which was statistically significant. And overall survival was a difference of 34 to 48 months. Um, the grade three and four adverse effects were about the same. So the three month or their 30 day post-op mortality morbidity was the same between the two groups. So really showing that it was well tolerated and fairly safe for this group of patients. There was also a study published, or this is an abstract presented about a year ago at ASCO and sort of the same general principle. Patients that had um, primary ovarian cancer uh, were treated with standard chemotherapy uh, with surgery versus standard chemotherapy, surgery, and HIPEC. Um, in this group, they had 184 patients. They used a little bit lower dose of cisplatin, but also used cisplatin intraoperatively. Um, and they saw no difference in their post-op outcomes, so extent of surgery, blood loss, residual disease, or days in hospital. The only difference with this study was that they included both groups, the patients that underwent primary debulking as well as the patients that had neoadjuvant chemotherapy. And so their difference in PFS wasn't statistically significant, and their so overall survival also not different. Um, it was not statistically different. So 34 versus 48 months and 19 versus 20 months. This, again, is just abstract. I don't know what their final manuscript will look like. Um, and it, when they looked just at the neoadjuvant chemotherapy patients, they did see a statistically significant difference in survival. So again, maybe it's something's different about the patients that undergo neoadjuvant chemotherapy, but it seems that that is the group based on these two studies that would benefit from HIPEC. Um, so we have a study open here looking at HIPEC in the patients that have recurrent disease. So patients that are platinum sensitive, recurrent ovarian cancer that are candidates for surgery are taken to the operating room intraoperatively. They're randomly assigned to high pec or no high pec, and they subsequently get chemotherapy thereafter. Um, this should complete in December of 2018. The, the primary site is Memorial Sloan Kettering, uh, but this will be interesting data that we will get and hopefully help guide us in our use of high pec. Um, but, you know, it does, HIPEC, the studies so far do sh suggest a survival benefit or that it may benefit our patients that um, have ovarian cancer. There's still a couple questions we need to answer. You know, what drugs should we be using? Some, some studies use cisplatin. Some studies use carboplatin. Um, for appendiceal cancers, they use completely different chemo agents. So need to decide which chemo drug would be best. And then we also need to decide when we should be giving it. Should we be giving it for patients that had primary debulking, Interval debulking, only in recurrent setting. Um, so a lot to study yet. So um, the next is, this is going to take a little bit of a different turn here. Um, so can we make surgery more effective? Um, if we take out more tumor, we know from our historical studies that we're going to get a survival benefit. 
But if we go even further by taking out stuff that we can't see with our eye, will we improve survival? So there's very smart people out there that have learned from, learned techniques from the lab as well as from radiology. So when you have a PET CT scan, um, this is a CT scan here. You can hardly tell that there's a tumor here and there's a tumor near the liver here. But when you give the patient a glucose that's tagged with a nuclear marker, um, you can see that much more easily on the PET CT scan. So it's a, it's a glucose that is taken up by rapidly dividing cells, such as hot tumors, um, and it allows you to get better precision, maybe a little bit more sensitive when you're looking um, at scans. And Dr. Block also showed some lab studies from the lab earlier that we use immune fluorescence um, to to identify, um, target, or look for receptor status within cells. So again, kind of take, building off of this, can we use these techniques in the operating room? And currently, um, we use uh, ICG, which is indocythine green, to do things like sentinel nodes. So we inject a dye into, this is for endometrial cancer, we inject a dye into the cervix. Um, that dye goes out and deposits into a lymph node, and that helps us identify what we call the sentinel node or the first node cancer would go to if it left the uterus. So these techniques can actually help us minimize the amount of surgery we do. We do. So instead of doing a big lymphadenectomy for this patient, we're just taking out a couple nodes on each side, improving their surgical outcomes. We also use the same dye to help look at blood supply. So if we do a bowel resection during a patient's ovarian cancer to bulking, we will give them an, uh, this contrast or this fluorescent dye through their IV, and it will identify good blood supply compared to bad blood supply to allow us to hopefully decrease the risk of a leak from that, the bowel connection that we create during surgery. So if you, you, there are other things. You know, really looking at um, what's to come for surgery in the future is people are really looking at whether or not we can color code surgery. So can we give... Contra, can we give these immune agents or immune fluorescent agents to help us identify tumor? Can we use them to help us identify nerves and blood vessels? Um, you know, really trying to take what we see in medical school, the netter atlas, where everything's color-coded, vessels are red, brains are blue, can you put that in the patient when you go to operate? And can, you, can that help us preserve structures? Can it improve what we take out? Um, and then can it, it will also hopefully lead to less invasive procedures. So the, one of the companies has taken this technology and, and applied this to ovarian cancer. So using the folic acid receptor, which Dr. Block spoke of earlier, they've tagged um, that uh, um, a folate uh, analog type um, with a um, fluorescent probe, which then is given to a patient IV prior to surgery to help us identify tumor in the operating room. So they have a phase three trial looking to see, does this help? Does this improve our detection of ovarian cancer in the operating room, and does it improve survival? So patients um, that are undergoing surgery can choose to go on this study. They would all be given this folate um, FITC uh, uh, fluorescent probe. Uh, they then go to the operating room, and we can help identify these tumors just with an immune fluorescent camera. Um, so it's a folic acid targeting molecule. Um, so this can be used in the operating room to hopefully decrease or increase the amount of tumor that we can remove at the time of surgery. So again, many questions to be answered about this. Um, but does, it, does removing more increase complications? Does it improve survival? Um, and then also, if we can do these things in the operating room, can we use this for drug delivery? Can we use this for um, radiographic techniques to improve our detection before even going to the operating room to identify these tumors. So in conclusion, um, you know, we have HIPEC. Hopefully this will become something that we study a little more readily in ovarian cancer and hopefully can use this technique in the future to improve ovarian cancer survival. Uh, many questions to be answered. Um, same with the um, intraoperative imaging. Hopefully these techniques can be perfected to use um, for our patients with ovarian cancer, or hopefully we could use them to apply to other things like drug delivery. So many opportunities to improve surgery for patients with ovarian cancer. Um, and really don't think outside the box, think like there is no box. So. <laughs>